Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 16th of August. Former Indian Prime Minister Tal Bihari Vajpayee dies at 93. Mohajir rights activist calls for autonomous Karachi. And suicide blast in Afghanistan capital Kabul kills at least 48. And now for all the details, former Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee died on Thursday at the age of 93. He was admitted to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi since June 11 with a kidney tract infection, urinary tract infection, low urine output and chest congestion. Born on December 25, 1924, Vajpayee was the first leader of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP to be sworn in as the Prime Minister. His birthday celebrated as Good Governance Day by the party. Awarded India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna, in March 2015, he was the moderate face of Hindu nationalism and was admired by his political foes. During his second term as Prime Minister, Vajpayee ordered nuclear tests in May 1998 in a strategic masterstroke to blunt Pakistan's nuclear ambitions. He followed this up with peace overtures to Pakistan, riding on the first direct bus from India to Pakistan in February 1999. Vajpayee announced his retirement from politics in 2005. Death toll rose to at least 73 in India's flood-hit Kerala province on Thursday. As the flood situation is getting worse by the day, the federal government has launched massive rescue and relief operations in the southern province. Death toll climbed to at least 73 in India's flood-ravaged Kerala province on Thursday. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued a red alert for 12 out of its 14 districts. It has also forecast heavy to very heavy rain in the southern province until Saturday. The transport system of the province has been severely affected due to rise in water. Over 50 rescue teams, including personnel from the Indian Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard and National Disaster Response Force, have been deployed to find marooned people. Food packets and drinking water are also being rushed. Famous for its coastline and picturesque backwaters, Kerala is a major destination for domestic and international tourists. The province last saw such devastating flooding in 1924. In news from Pakistan, the presidential election in Pakistan will be held on September 4th. The country's poll body announced on Thursday. President Mamnoon Hussain's five-year term is set to expire on September 9th. The election commission said nomination papers for the post can be filed on August 27th. With less than a month left before the expiry of President Mamnoon Hussain's term, the Election Commission of Pakistan on Thursday issued a schedule for presidential election setting September 4 as the day of the ballot. President Hussein's five-year term is set to expire on September 9th. According to the constitution, the presidential election must be held at least a month prior to the expiry of the incumbent's term, which in this case would have been August 8. The president is elected through a secret ballot by an electoral college comprising members of the Senate, National Assembly and four provincial assemblies. Ordinarily, the presidential election is held either a month after the general elections or at least a month before the expiry of the president's tenure. Holding a presidential election on August 8 was out of the question. However, since neither the national nor the provincial assemblies were functional then. Moving on, prominent Mohajir activist and Voice of Karachi chairman Nadeem Nusrat has called for an autonomous Karachi. He blamed that the Mohajir are being suppressed in Pakistan and their rights are being violated. Nadeem Nusrat, a prominent Mohajir activist and the chairman of Voice of Karachi has called for an autonomous Karachi as Mohajirs in the Pakistani city are being suppressed without getting any rights. 
While talking about ethnic and minority rights in Pakistan, Nusrat blamed Muhajirs are being targeted in the country for raising voice against injustices being meted out to them. He also informed that the Voice of Karachi, a US-based advocacy group, is raising the voice of every voiceless belonging to ethnic and religious minority who are routinely killed in Pakistan. Muhajirs especially, whose forefathers are at the forefront of Pakistan movement, have been systematically targeted in Karachi and other areas, urban areas of Sindh province. We haven't seen even one Muhajir chief minister in Sindh province. Now, with Karachi having more population than most countries in the world, Karachi deserves the right to be administratively independent, autonomous. Muhajis are Muslim immigrants whose descendants migrated from various regions of India after the partition of India in 1947 to settle in Pakistan. They have long blamed Pakistani establishment for sponsoring terrorism and inflicting gross human rights violations against the community in the country. In news from Afghanistan, at least 48 people were killed and several wounded on Wednesday in a suicide attack on an educational center in Afghan capital, Kabul city. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the blast, which came after several weeks of relative calm in Kabul. The death toll from a suicide blast at an education center in mainly Shiite area of Kabul on Wednesday reached 48, with another 67 wounded the health ministry confirmed. The explosion happened on Wednesday at a time when students in the centre were in class. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the blast which came after several weeks of relative calm in Afghan capital but previous attacks on Shiite targets in the area have been claimed by Islamic State. <laughs> The Taliban, which has been intensifying its attacks against the military and the government centers in recent weeks, issued a statement denying involvement in Wednesday's attack. More on news from Afghanistan. Independent Human Rights Commission of Afghanistan has claimed that human rights were violated in Ghazni and many war crimes were also committed during the four-day clashes between the security forces and Taliban in the city. The watchdog said bodies of the deceased were left untouched on the ground for days during the clashes. Officials from the Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission or AIHRC on Wednesday said human rights violations were committed in Ghajni and many war crimes occurred during the four-day seize on the city. AIHRC also added substantial damage was caused to government and private properties with many homes and businesses looted. In reference to the human rights violations issue, the AIHRC said the bodies laid untouched on the ground for days. <laughs> In the first few hours of the attack, which started last week, only a small number of security forces resisted the onslaught by Taliban which enabled the terror group to take over the key areas of the city, said local media reports. The clashes in Ghajni have dampened hopes of peace talks ahead of the parliamentary elections in Afghanistan this year. The first female wheelchair basketball player, Insha Bashir from India's Jammu and Kashmir, is inspiring many in the valley. After fighting the depression of a childhood accident, Bashir, who is confined to wheelchair, started practicing the sport to feel motivated and achieve life goals. After breaking barriers and playing for different level tournaments, the first female wheelchair basketball player, Insha Bashri from India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province, has become a role model for many. Bashir was confined to wheelchair after an accident which made her disabled to walk. After fighting the depression of her accident, Bashir started practicing basketball and now has played for many local and national level wheelchair basketball tournaments. मुझे बचपन से खेलकूद में बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट थी मैं क्रिकेट खेलती थी 
और हमेशा खेलती रहती थी खेल कूद में बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट थी उसके बाद इन 2017 मैंने डिसाइड किया कि मैं क्या कर सकती हूँ फर्दर जो मुझे थोड़ा खुशी महसूस हो जाए लिवली फील हो तो मैं वॉल्टियर मेडिकल सोसाइटी आ गई वहाँ पे मैं देख रही थी एक खेल रहे थे व्हील चेयर बॉयज़ टीम खेल रहे थे नेशनल टीम खेल रहा था मैं इनको अक्सर देखती थी Bashir, who is originally from Budgam district of Kashmir Valley, is now pursuing her studies in Indian capital New Delhi. Kashmir Valley has many aspiring basketball players, including scores of differently abled kids. In a bid to provide a platform for the disabled players, authorities recently organized a special basketball training camp where Bashir also participated. Hundreds of Hindu devotees thronged an annual monsoon fair held recently in Ayodhya city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. The fair witnessed devotees seeking blessings from the children dressed up as Hindu god and goddesses and it is believed that it will bring them eternal peace. Hundreds of Hindu devotees thronged to India's holy city of Ayodhya in northern Uttar Pradesh province on Tuesday to attend an annual monsoon fair. Known as Ayodhya Savan Jula Mela, the fair is celebrated throughout the month of monsoon. It is believed that the devotees who attend the fair get eternal peace and are liberated from the worldly materialistic items. Devotees take blessings from children on swings who are dressed up as Hindu Lord Krishna and his partner Radha at the fair. Here, Thakur Ji is a jula jula. अयोध्या धाम में उस के लिए निवास करते हैं यहाँ का मात है कि आज इस उत्सव में अगर कोई भी संत महंत कोई भी यहाँ का नागरिक श्रद्धालुजन अगर सम्मिलित होते हैं और उत्सव में भाग लेते हैं तो वास्तव में उनको बहुत ही पुण्य प्राप्त होता है एज पर द हिंदू कैलेंडर द मंथ ऑफ मानसून इज रेफर टू एस श्रावण विच फॉल्स इन ड्यूरिंग जुलाई और ऑगस्ट The holy month also marks the celebration of the union of Hindu Lord Shiva and his consort Goddess Parvati. It commemorates the day when Lord Shiva accepted Goddess Parvati's love for him. Thousands of devotees celebrated celestial marriage of Hindu god and goddess in southern Indian town of Rameshwaram. The marriage is celebrated annually during the Tamil month of Adi spanning July and August. Thousands of devotees celebrated the celestial marriage of a Hindu god and goddess in Rameshwaram town of India's southern Tamil Nadu province on Thursday. The divine marriage of god Ramanatha Swami with goddess Parvata Vardhini Amman is annually celebrated at Ramanatha Swami temple during a 17-day span. Special prayers were offered and holy chants were recited by the priests. Amidst the Vedic chants, chief priests of the temple adorned goddess Parvata Vardhini with a sacred thread used to symbolize marriage between two people. Rami Sura Rama Swami, Koyil ki ne ki thirkale na danchi, Ambal ke Swami ki thirkale na danchi. Yu ula ka pugal petra or thirthala maga. Ambal ke Swami ki thirkale na danchi, lara ne to nallavari na danchi. Yella makkal ma ande karan dekhtaanga. Kurangnya kurang beri kalangan kita dengar. Ini adalah inna orang bisnes amna ambal ke ayah ke terkali anak tanah mah. Semua orang pat amna. Kali pon orang ke kaliana ada kali pon orang ke kaliana ada kumu orang hari ini. The event which is celebrated during the Tamil month of Adi in July and August was also attended by political leaders along with others. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Former Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee dies at 93. Mohajir rights activist calls for autonomous Karachi. And suicide blast in Afghanistan capital Kabul kills at least 48. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.